Welcome to the Small Talk Podcast, uh, where we take a deep dive into uh, the local entrepreneurs that are making a huge impact in our community. I'm Mike Smalligan, and today we have Parker DeCubber with uh, Prime Edge Media. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. So um, tell me a little bit about your um, business and what you actually do. So the best way I like to explain it is we essentially come into big companies that are doing, you know, anywhere from 500 to one, uh, 1. 1.5 million a year. Okay. And we come into those companies and essentially act as their in-house multimedia team just for about half the price and none of the nuance that comes along with hiring an in-house team. So, um, you know, our main hustle is video marketing and it's huge. Zip, yeah. yeah. And video marketing actually designed to get results. Okay. So, um, like how, how do you find your businesses to work with or do they find you? So it's a little bit of both because we do do like a lot of our own video marketing that does attract like the people that we want to work with, which is nice. Um, but then we also have our Facebook community, um, video marketing secrets for local businesses where, you know, that's where we get the bulk of the, uh, the people that work with us. Because, is that a local community? Yes. So for like West Michigan or yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Grand Rapids area ish. Um, and then we have a few from like the east side, a couple in like Indiana and Illinois and sure. places like that. But it's mainly around here. Um, essentially, what that group is designed to do is teach people, you know, everything that they need to know about video marketing in their business so that they can, you know, essentially just use the practices that we've learned through throughout the last like three years and execute them. And then the idea is essentially that once they've learned enough and they've actually started making money doing it, then um, hopefully they'll trust us enough to want to come work with us once everything is tapped out and they want to take it to the next level. That okay. Yeah. So you're, you're um, kind of managing their social media. Are you teaching them at the same time and how to do it on their own or? So if, so if they're a partner of ours, um, it's all done for you. But if, um, like, as far as the Facebook group, we're just giving them, like, SOPs, live trainings, podcasts, things like that. Okay. So, like, just coaching, basically, and yeah. how, to, how to do a little bit of what you do, and yeah. you'll bring it to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, can you give me an example of maybe some video that you've done that's had a big impact on a, on a business, like one of your success stories? Sure. Um, I mean, we've got quite a few. Um, so on the video ad side, because we have two different platforms. So we do um, organic video and then we do um, like video ads. So on the video ad side, we just worked with um, NTH Lawn Service in uh, Kalamazoo. And they just, um, their biggest thing was like, they have a lot of big competitors like, you know, Lawn Doctor and True Green and stuff sure. like that. But um, they, they, do actually have a better like fertilization program than a lot of those places for a little bit more money because they're a smaller business. But what we did was we, um, you know, we got ahead of what all the other um, landscaping companies were doing as far as their marketing goes. Yeah. We jumped ahead of them about two months and put out a direct response ad that talked about all the problems that everybody that, you know, buys from a fertilization place essentially deals with sure um and they had a killer guarantee it was like um let's see their offer was um you'll get a golf course like lawn in three weeks or less or you don't pay and that's what really like set it off and um he plugged in i think five hundred dollars for the month and within 30 days he had a three dollar cost per lead it's awesome which was incredible because it was a you know, it's a fertilization program. Like it, it takes quite a bit of money and effort to do. So yeah. Yeah. Um, then on the organic side, um, cause we do a lot of testing. So, and that's how we're able to like get the results that we need because, yeah. you know, it's not an exact science, but, um, let's see. So, I mean, honestly, a lot of it is just general growth. I mean, we do a lot with reels. We do a lot of direct response. Um, just to try and get conversions off of the actual ads themselves. Um, you know, because like everybody can sit and do like branding stuff all day where they educate people and all that stuff, but that doesn't drive conversions. Whereas, um, you know, direct response stuff where you're, you know, capturing their attention and yeah. getting them to like click a link or go to a lead form or something like that. Um, you know, that's typically what we handle because it has the highest ROI. Okay. 
Yeah. I mean, let me mention the lawn care service. I can think of, and I don't even cut my own grass, right? I do hire that out. Uh, But I can think of two people that I follow on TikTok that all they do is cut grass and they show how they do it for other people. And um, I think, yeah, if you can make marketing um, interesting to somebody that isn't really interested yeah. um, in that type of that that's a pretty powerful message that, that you can get out there so 100% um, how do you stay on top of current trends or like what what types of uh, trends do you follow or how do you how do you know what to do next <sighs> great question so it's it's really nice because like I'm young so I'm a consumer too Sure. And with, you know, with being young, I feel like that's a huge advantage, especially because I have a lot of young people behind me as well on my team that, you know, are constantly consuming every single day, you know, going through reels and checking out different, you know, trending audios and like things like that. Um, so really, it's just consuming and keeping track of like what the big players are doing. If they make any big moves, like a lot of... Um, a lot of our research for like on the ad side of things comes from actually just stalking the ad library of other like bigger yeah. companies. And that's how we do a lot of our research for our clients too. Like we'll look at, you know, what are, what are the people in your market doing right now and how can we do it a little bit better? How yep. can we be, you know, a little bit different? And um, yeah, I would say that and just consuming constantly and paying attention is really like, the, the biggest needle mover for us because you can, you know, you can consume content and be entertained by it. And, you know, most people, if you think about it, like most people are just in a very like tired, lethargic state while they're just doom scrolling through their feed. Okay. Whereas like, um, when it comes to us, yeah, do something yeah. to stop there. Yes. And get their like, attention. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, as far as like the research is concerned, like we have to kind of set aside time to be like, okay, I'm going to actively look through these things and like, you know, write down what people are doing, how things are changing, looking at metrics, things like that. Awesome. So, um, what platform are you using the most, or do you see that it, uh, is the biggest potential for growth? So I think biggest potential for growth really comes down to the business itself. If we're talking video marketing for business, um, because it, it all depends on where your audience lives. So like people your age hang out different places online than people my age do. Sure. So, you know, like people actually more like middle age, forties, fifties are actually getting on TikTok now. Um, so that's why like a lot of people are thinking that I'm one of those. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are thinking that TikTok is, you know, the biggest um, chance to blow up right now because that audience is shifting. You know, people are realizing that TikTok isn't just for, you know, little 12 year olds to dance and, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Like it's actually a very, you know, in, uh, entertaining and informative platform. Um, and it's also an incredibly fast way to test whether or not like your, um, I guess your videos are a hit because they go through the algorithm super fast. Yeah. Like, you know, I, in fact, we had tested, um, we had tested one video and it took us two days to get the, like the whole audience tapped out. And like, that's how we knew, um, the one that kept growing past that, like two to three day mark, that was the one that would, you know, we had to, you know, continue, I guess, continue using. Um, whereas on other platforms, it can take, you know, days and days and days to weeks to really gain enough traction. For sure. Yeah. So, um, is there a lot of competition in your industry, especially in the Grand Rapids area? Or are you uh, like one of the few? So that it's an interesting question because I don't like to pay attention to, um, competition very much just because I feel like my, my main competition is, really the objections that are in the heads of my prospects. So they're not typically bidding with other companies because we like to come at it from like a very bare bones, like educational perspective in the group. Um, So typically when they come to us, they don't bid with other companies. They're, you know, because we are who they grow with, I guess. Um, But as far as competition and stuff, I mean, there's, there's plenty of video companies around here and there's some that, um, you know, there's some, video companies like that just do video production. There's some companies that do just marketing and don't handle video. Whereas we do both. Okay. 
So what's it look like if a company wanted to get on board with you? So I think the first step would be for them to join your Facebook group and to learn a little bit about what you offer and how you work with your clients. But then what would be next? Like, so they, they say, hey, I, I, Parker, I want you to be our video guy. Do you just show up and tell, tell them what to do? Or is there, what, what's the process like? So the process from start to finish. Um, so typically what we'll do in the group is um, we hand out free resources all the time to the people that just enter the group. Because if I invite you to a group called Video Marketing Secrets, you know, it's, um, it's definitely something that you're interested in. You know, people don't just like go looking for video marketing secrets, just for fun, I guess. Um, so we'll start messaging with them, you know, see like where they're at and see like what they need help with. Then from there, um, you know, they'll either start producing their own content and realize that it's super hard and that they have a little bit of extra marketing budget and they'll hire us. Um, or, you know, sometimes it's a little bit slower of a process and we have to kind of talk them through it and we get on a, a like 10 to 15 minute discovery call, ask them a few questions, you know, see if they would actually be a good fit for, um, you know, what we're doing. And also if we would be a good fit to work with them, because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, like, I hear a lot in the marketing industry that a lot of people just want to make sales and they're not, um, they're not concerned enough about the, the client's needs. And that's, that kind of brings in a stigma, um, you know, like a lot of business owners have been burned by marketing For companies. Sure. So um, I, th I think it all comes down to your qualification process because if we just want to make a sale, we'll do anything that we can to try and show them like, oh, well, yeah, we can, you know, take photos too. We don't have a camera, but I guess we'll figure it out, you know, and things like that. Whereas for us, it's a very, very strict process. Like there's a lot of requirements that you have to meet to be able to work with us just because I never ever want to have a, um, a partner leave us saying, you know, that was not what we wanted. You know, we were underwhelmed. And I think that's, um, can take your whole life you know, to build a good reputation, but minutes to ruin it. Right. hundred percent. Absolutely. And that's some of the best advice I've ever heard. Um, you know, cause I was, I wrote that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was told that very, very, very early on, like when I was still in college, um, you know, and, um, but anyway, back to your question. So, um, if we decide mutually that it would be a good fit, then we move on to an idea session where we'll actually come up with a few different ideas and pitch them. And it can be anything from a one-off project to a, you know, months and months and months of content and really just depends on like what their needs are and what um, stage they're in as far as like knowledge for social media marketing and like things like that. Okay. Um, you know, and then by then we just host a kickoff meeting, go over brainstorming and all that stuff. Um, we try and keep it a very low touch process for um, just for our entrepreneurs sake, because they're always, always, always busy. So we have to make sure that everything that's a life, is, right? Yeah. And, you know, we have to make sure that everybody is understood and feels understood. Um, and then, you know, we'll uh, go back and hand it off to the writers to do like the outlines and stuff. They'll approve them or disapprove them and we'll make final adjustments. Then we come in, we make you look like a movie star and, uh, nice. you know, and then we go to, um, you know, post-production and we go through four separate stages and you have to approve each final stage so that every part of the video and every piece of content that we make is exactly what you asked for. Is going to do exactly what you wanted it to do. Nice. Whereas, you know, we've noticed with um, a lot of other companies, because we've actually worked with our competition before, um, just to kind of get a pulse on the market and see what other people were offering and what we could kind of improve on ourselves. And what we noticed was there was a lot of those companies that would just send us a final video. And I didn't like that because, you know, then it, it like the feel doesn't match right and, you know, things like that. And, um, it just doesn't feel like a very collaborative process. Whereas I feel that, you know, we are, we're designed to be your in-house multimedia team. We're, we're designed to, you know, mimic a real, you know, employee. And I feel that a real employee would be taking you through that collaborative process. And like, I love, you know, I, I always like the feeling of, you know, like pulling someone into your office and like, hey, look at this. Like, isn't this really cool? And I still get to do that even virtually. 
Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think that's also very, very important. Um, and then the last step in the process is our distribution plan. So this is how we get results because we can just produce pretty content all day and that's what everybody does. But if you don't know how to post it with good copy that's designed to convert and, um, you know, good thumbnails and targeting and hashtags and all of that good stuff, it's not going to do well. So we take over that entire process. You can either pay to have our guys like upload it all for you and just keep it off your hands. That's what a lot of our like monthly retainer clients like us to do. Um, and then the other option is we come up with a distribution plan, walk your employees through it and show them, you know, hey, this is what you need to do on each platform to make them optimized. Um, and we give away like a basic playbook, essentially, of like, you know, every time you post, make sure it follows like this criteria and things like that. Nice. So how do you get into it? How did, how did you get get into uh, video production and content creation and uh, the business that you have today? Like what what started that for you? So I have an interesting story because um, it was it's it's not like, oh, yeah, I had a camera in my hands when I was two, you know, like it, yeah. it was never like that. Like we never I don't think we ever really thought that this was the direction I was going in, um, but it just kind of fell in my lap. You know, I've always kind of liked art and things like that. And I originally actually wanted to get into uh, graphic design and I realized I wasn't good at that. Yeah. Um, and this was like when I was like 15 or 16. That's hard to do to yeah. realize what you're not good at. Yeah. <laughs> but I realized, you know, with a, with a camera, I felt a lot more confident, you know, and I love like telling a story through photos and video. And, um, I really started taking it seriously, um, actually through COVID. So it was my junior year of high school. And, um, I like, we, you know, we were home from school, so I had nothing to do. And I wasn't ever good at school. So like I didn't pay attention much either. Sure. So all I would do in my free time is just like put together and edit videos. So what I did, um, cause my, actually my entire family are, um, professional bowlers or well, some are professional, some are amateur, but we're, you know, bowling runs in the family. All right. And my father was, what's your a, high score? Uh, 299, I think. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was actually the original plan it was, I was going to go on tour and do all that stuff. Um, but there's, there's not enough money in it for the level of passion I had for it, I guess. But, um, so anyway, my dad has a very, very, you know, incredible past in the sport. And he, you know, he was incredible when he was my age. Um, you know, and the, uh, I guess the, the nuance to that, though, was he was very um, animated. You know, if he if he bowled bad, you knew about it, you know, and he like like bowling, especially back in like the 80s and 90s was like super buttoned up and, you know, professional, whereas he was just all over the place. OK, but he was incredible. So the Grand Rapids Bowling Hall of Fame um, did not want to induct him because of his controversial past, even though mm. he has better statistics than anybody else in the hall of fame right now. Um, he, you know, there's a couple people that, you know, didn't like him. So they voted him out. And what I did was I put together a feature length film with just my iPhone and, you know, got my first couple lights and all that good stuff. And I just kind of figured it out. And we put together this entire like feature length documentary about his entire life, his bowling career, and um, really showing people the other side of him, I guess, you know, to get them to really understand like who he was. And, um, you know, it changed, it changed a lot of minds. And since then, um, they they haven't inducted anybody since COVID, but there is rumor this year that he is going to be inducted. Well, that's awesome. So, so by uh, highlighting your dad's uh, success in bowling, you found your passion in video. That's absolutely. Awesome. I mean, it was it was all I worked on for probably nine months straight. You know, it was all I thought about. It was all I wanted to do. Um, you know, and then after that, I got into like the photography side of things. You know, because people were asking me to like take photos and stuff and. Um, I did sports photography. I did like senior photos, family photos, things like that. I didn't really like it just because it, um, I actually, you know, it's not that I didn't like it. It was that I worked with one, um, one company and it was actually in Grand Rapids, downtown Grand Rapids. It's, um, Dennis Johnson. He owns Click Lanes. It's a, like a two story old bowling center. Yeah. And he was a really good friend of ours. And, um, I just asked him like, Hey, can I come in and shoot like a promo video for you? Cause I've yeah. never done it before. 
And um, I did that. And right after that, it got a ton of engagement and did really, really well. And I was like, wow, like I got more, I got more fulfillment out of seeing the results that it got more than, you know, anything that like the photos and stuff ever did, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, you know, and I, uh, candidly, I also realized that there was a lot more money in working with businesses sure. and stuff because there was actually a problem to solve. Whereas, you know, I mean, we can sit here and argue all day about like, what is the value of a picture on the wall? You know, and you get to look at it every day and it's a nice family photo. It's worth you know? someone, what somebody will pay for it, right? Exactly. Whereas, you know, working with businesses, solving their marketing problems, we can put a dollar amount on it. You know, we we need to see X amount of people, you know, in the door within the next like 60 days. And this is what it's going to cost, you know, and it's about like bringing that cost per lead down and things like that. And I just I have a more analytical mind. So I really like playing around with the numbers and the metrics and stuff like that. It's just more, I guess, more stimulating for me. Um, yeah. So where, um, did you grow up in the Byron Center area or where did you grow up? So I grew up in Wyoming, um, okay. in, uh, Wyoming, the town, not the state. Um, yeah. and, uh, we had, we've moved around. We, let's see. So went from Wyoming to door to Kentwood and back to door. And then I moved to Byron Center. Nice. Um, so yeah, we've been local my entire life. Okay. Um, what, what do you love about Grand Rapids? What brings you here? Or it keeps you here because you've always been. Yeah. Um, it's. I feel that it's right down the middle of like, like it's just busy enough and there's just enough to do, but it's not too crazy, you know? And also like, it's nice having family here and like things like that. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's not as crazy as like a Detroit, you know? And um, like, I'm not a very like big city type person. And I feel like Grand Rapids, you know, especially like downtown is a very good, in between, I guess, because I don't like, you know, door is like living in the sticks. So, you know, there's yeah. not a whole lot to do out there either. But, um, but I think Grand Rapids as a whole, like there's, there's so much going on all the time that, you know, you can't really get bored of it. Yeah. So a as a local, you've been here your entire life, where would be one place that you would say, that's where I want to bring my camera. Cause there's going to be something interesting going on. <laughs> oh, I like that question. Um, oh, man, literally anywhere downtown like <laughs> i you know especially on weekends and stuff there's always stuff going on um you know unfortunately with art prize not being here anymore like that was that yeah. was the thing to to take your camera to but um like they do like the light shows and you know stuff like that like in the winter like they had um I don't remember what street it was, but they had a street just lined with um, trees, you know, wrapped in Christmas lights, yep. you know, and, and stuff like that. And that that was always like the coolest thing to go at night and, you know, take a take a super wide lens out there and to shoot portraits like, yeah, those were those were really fun to shoot. Um, other places would be like just the beach. I mean, we're 30, 30, 45 minutes from the beach. Um, you know, and that's always like a good place to, you know, take, take your drone out to and yeah. And stuff what kind like of drone that. you got? Uh, we have a D, uh, DJI mini three. Awesome. So we, we just got into aerial stuff. Okay. Yeah. We, um, I've been into drones for a while now. We got that's a awesome. few of them. So, um, yeah. So, um, so, so you've lived your, your whole life. Like what would be a reason for somebody else to want to make a move to, to Michigan or to Grand Rapids? Oh dude, there's just so much to do all the time. And I, I feel like, you know, because the West side is growing so much that there's more and more and more opportunities for, um, I guess just stuff to do. I mean, there's tons of businesses opening up all over the place. So there's plenty of opportunities for employment. Um, you know, and then of course, like there's always events going on. If you just walk downtown for 30 minutes on a Friday, you'll find a ton of things to do. Sure. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, we're 45 minutes from the beach and, you know, it's a very like 20 central. minutes from everything, right? Yeah. Like yeah. it's a very central location, I guess, for, um, for Michigan. Oh, cool. Um, so, um, is there any questions that, um, maybe I didn't ask you that you wish I would have? I think because this is a businessy type of podcast, I think it would be kind of beneficial to talk a little bit more about like my story because I'm, I'm very, um, 
I guess I'm a very big advocate for young entrepreneurs getting the right information. I was going to ask you that that was actually going to be my next question. Yeah. Like what <laughs> advice would you have for a young entrepreneur starting a business? Like, like I'm sure you've learned something uh, from the so time you've started things. that you wish you would have known kind of when you got started. Oh, dude. Uh, I wish I would have started earlier. That's what everybody says. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that I started when I did. After high school, I had decided to go to college and I was actually like, I wasn't taking on the business full time. Um, I, so I went to Adrian college and I was, um, I was supposed to go there for social work. I wanted to So be what put a, you into college? What put me into college was honestly, um, just because I wanted to do a little bit better than I guess the rest of my family did because, um, most of my family didn't go to college and if they did, they didn't, you know, didn't use their degree. And, um, you know, at the time I was also a huge like mental health advocate. I still am, but I've realized that it wasn't the, you know, the path that I wanted. Cause like I said, you know, I'm not like very into school and you know, sure. things like I think that. a lot of people do go to college just because they feel like that's what they have to do, um, to be successful. 100%. And you know, the, I guess that it's, it's great advice for young entrepreneurs to not, take everybody's advice about, you know, higher education, really weigh your options seriously. Like, and I'm, and I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and dog on college at all. I think there's a huge place in the world for higher education. However, in the business world, especially starting out, I don't think it's required. Now that's my opinion and you're more than welcome to have your own. Um, and everybody watching is far more than welcome not to take my advice. But, um, I would say definitely look at, look at it logically, you know, look at what you want to do with your life. Don't look at what other people want you to do with your life. Because one thing that they don't tell you is that when you start growing up, those people that have all this reign over how you feel about yourself have absolutely nothing to do with what you do with your life after that, if that makes sense. So if people tell you to go to college, they, you know, I feel like people tell kids to go to college nowadays because it's the, you know, natural next step. And it's so prestigious to, you know, go to college. And, and I think even it's big for some parents sometimes to say, you know, hey, my kid went to college. Whereas I was very fortunate that my parents were not that way at all. Um, so, yeah, just like seriously, what are your options? Um I guess getting back to, um, my like story or my business journey or whatever, um, I had, so I went to Adrian and I actually realized that they were a business school, which was very, very cool. And, um, I don't regret going to college at all because the, you know, I spent a year there and I made some incredible connections. Um, and, and I guess that would be the one thing that I would say go to college for is just the connections and like all the people that you meet. I still hang out with a bunch of people that I went to college from. Sure. Or, or I still hang out with a bunch of people that I went to college with. I get what you mean. Um, yeah. So um, after that, I, you know, the business was actually starting to make some money while I was still at college. And I was just, I felt very out of place because I think young entrepreneurs don't realize how isolated that they're going to be no matter what. Um, just because you move so quickly as far as, um, I guess, just the things that you learn. So, like, I've developed so quickly as a person in just the last, like, six months. Like, I am a totally different person than I was six months ago. And I think that's something that's not talked about enough. Um, you know, and, like... A lot of your friends, if you have friends that are your age, you know, in high school and things like that, a lot of them want to go party. A lot of them it's want about to, priorities, you know, right? Yes, exactly. And, you know, whereas you're you're told a lot of times that like, oh, you don't have to work so hard. You know, oh, you just just come out with us and, you know, whatever. But it's like I enjoy building my business. You know, I that's why I do it. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, we don't. We, we don't do this to be billionaires. We do it because we love it. And um, I think, you know, getting into, uh, into entrepreneurship, I think you need to really have thick skin and understand why you're doing it at all times because it's absolutely the hardest thing that you will ever do, but it is one of the most freeing and fulfilling things that I've ever done in my entire life. Um, 
So as far as advice and things like that go, I would say, um, first of all, don't spend money that you don't have, um, both mentally and physically, because it really hurts when, when things like that don't, don't go through. Um, but I, I think I would also say just don't stop. Don't listen to anybody that is trying to bring you down because it, it's just noise and it doesn't seem like it, especially when you're young, but seriously, you cannot take everything that everybody above you or, you know, is perceived to be above you as gospel. They're just trying to help you. Um, you know, and sometimes the, the best advice doesn't come from those who mean the best, you know, and want the best for you because they just don't know. They just don't have the experience. Yeah. And I think that's a very difficult thing to contend with when you're, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, because you want to listen to all the people that have supported you your entire life, but they aren't always necessarily the best people to listen to, if that makes sense. I I think you said something earlier that could apply to a lot of things, which is be very clear on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, That could be applied to college, right? Like a lot of people, I think, go into college and and they're not really sure on why they're going. They just think that's what they're going to do. Like, I, there's so many people I talked to when I even got to Adrian, you know, I, I would ask people like, what's your major? And they're like, Oh, I don't know. Like I'll figure it out in two years. Sure. And then you, you also mentioned it as being an entrepreneur, like you, you need to be real clear on what your goal is. Right. Yes. So you, there, there's going to be people that are going to tell you what their opinion is, but if you have a clear vision on what you want for yourself, then none of that really is going to matter as much. Yeah. And um, just for those of us at home, you don't need a business degree to go into business. I promise. <laughs> now, like you can get it, I guess, if you want. It's, it's experience, it, right? Yeah, so it's experience. you can get that in a lot of different places. Absolutely. You can get it from working um, in on the job education, right? Yeah. Um, you can get it from get it. going to school. You can get it from watching videos or reading books, right? So yeah. there's lots of different ways to learn and to grow and to be a better uh, leader, entrepreneur, business person. I mean, it's there's not one way to do anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and, and that's why, like, it's just so, it's so important to know not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it. Like getting out of, um, getting out of school. Like I went, so I actually went to Davenport for, um, like four weeks and then I, and there, I think I was going for my bachelor's in, um, like business management or something just because I felt like, you know, I wanted something in the field and whatever. And I, you know, I just went to college because I thought I had to. Yeah. Um, But after realizing that I was actually kind of losing money being in school full time and having that taking half my focus, I couldn't put everything into the business, which is what I wanted to do, you know? And I, um, and I think I, you know, I am different in that way that, you know, I, I kind of feel like I figured it out, like figured out what I wanted to do pretty quickly. Um, just because I had an incredible support system behind me, you know, I still do. Um, and you know, it, you guys watching at home don't know this, but my mom actually is shooting, uh, behind the scenes for me today, you know, and, um, and she learned how to shoot 24 hours ago. Um, <laughs> uh, just because I was, um, I was scrambling the other day to try and find someone cause our team is all booked up. Um, you know, good problem to have though. 100%. Um, you know, and she stepped in and I didn't even have to ask. She was just like, you know, I know you're struggling and I just, I want to help. And that's how my entire family and friends and mentors and everybody is. And I think that's another big thing too, is surround yourself with people that want to see you win unconditionally. Like there's so many people that I've met that, unfortunately only wanted me to grow as big as they were. Whereas, um, there's a lot of people in my life that want to see me go way past what they're doing, you know, and those are the people that you need to stay in contact with because those are the people that you can call when everything is falling apart, you know, and say, Hey, listen, I, I'm drowning here. I need help. And those are always the people I go to, to pull me out of that. Because we all have that, you know, we're not perfect. We're all just trying to trudge through life here. And, you know, we're all just kind of figuring it out. 
Um, yes, that's another thing too, is don't put too much pressure on yourself. Seriously. I like I still do that to this day. It, you know, it's so hard not to hold yourself to such a high standard. Um, but it's okay to take weekends off once in a while, you know, it's okay to breathe for a minute and hang out with friends and, you know, whatever, like it, you know, I'm 20, like I'm going to enjoy my twenties, but I'm also going to build my business. Um, and I think that's something that young entrepreneurs kind of get wrapped up in sometimes where they they just think that they have to just grind and hustle all the time, but you just burn yourself out, you know, like your, your business is meant to serve you, not the other way around. Good advice. So I could definitely sit here all day and talk to you about <laughs> entrepreneurship and For sure. uh, video marketing. But um, yeah, so I mean, I really do appreciate you sharing uh, your wisdom and advice. And um, I don't know if it's a whole lot of wisdom, but <laughs> I think more than you know, I think I think you will reach that. out to some younger audience uh, members that um, are thinking about getting started, whether it's in video editing or swinging a hammer, whatever it is, right? Like, yeah. I think a lot of that can be um, cross posted, I think would be a appropriate term. But yeah, um, and um, well, and actually, that, that brings up one last thing. Um, the uh, I guess the second reason that I started the business was um, because in college, while I was freelancing and trying to kind of build because I was still Parker to cover productions at the time, um, you know, I noticed how difficult the transition between art and business was, you know, and you like, if you're good at art, you have to learn how to sell yourself no matter what in order to get to where you want to go. So the ultimate goal for me is to build a team where, um, you know, I can just pull the best creatives I know and give them a platform where they can actually be compensated correctly and they don't have to worry about sales like that. That's creating a, huge, a team. Huge, huge yep. thing for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's something for my business too. I yeah. think we're we're all good at our own things, oh. and when you come together, you can do a lot more. Absolutely. So, how can uh, somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to use your services? Oh, plenty of different ways. Um, What's the name of your Facebook group again? Uh, Video marketing secrets for local businesses. It's okay, kind of a mouthful. Um, but no, easiest way to to reach us would just be. Um, you know, you can find us on Facebook, add me on Facebook, Parker to cover. Um, that's where I do all like the business stuff through. We're also just at prime Inch media everywhere. Um, we also have a contact page on our website. You can fill out a form and book a call with me and, uh, I guess direct message on any platform, you know, that, we, nice. that we're on, I think would just be a good way. Okay. Well, I really do appreciate you coming in and of sharing course. with us today for appreciate our time. You. And, um, I wish you success. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, Parker. Thanks.